Assalamu alaikum and I'm so excited. <laughs> it's the we have entered into the last 10 days. <clears throat> Excuse me. And mashallah, we are and we've entered into the days of great opportunity, of great possibility, of great blessing. And I'm so excited to talk about them with you. As we move into the third part of our series, which is becoming of the beloved. I know, I feel that the human being craves this the most. When we talk about removing the ugly, we know that we need to do that. When we talk about bringing on beauty to our hearts, we know that we need to do that. But we all want to be of the beloved. I really think that the world is full today of profoundly lonely people. Profoundly lonely. And the reason for that, in my view, is that the human race has begun to seek a quenching of that loneliness only through other human beings. And even though human beings are so important to our lives and it's it's such an important part of what makes us human is the interaction with other human beings and how that interaction helps us grow. Real companionship and nourishment comes from a different place. It comes from a place of knowing God and knowing the lover. So sorry, that was a phone call that came in. And knowing the lovers of God and knowing the, the road to God. While loneliness is something that certainly is part of life. I think it's part of life. The profound loneliness that people feel today is unidentified because we don't understand where it's coming from. And it's coming from a fitra that has not been fulfilled. So as we walk into the path this week of discovering how to be of the beloved, this takes on a, even more urgency, I would say. The urgency of a great need that we have. We want to feel loved and we want to be loved and we want a heart that works to love. So in that topic area, we can talk first today, our area of becoming of the people who Allah love. Our topic area today is to become of the people of taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ my, the way I'm going to manage this little class is I'm going to be choosing a, a quality, that a person that Allah loves. إِنَّ اللَّهِ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ And then we are going to focus in our jizit about where we can learn how to have those qualities of that loved person so that when we leave the class, inshallah, we have more clarity and we can walk on the path of becoming of the beloved. And also in that way, we don't leave the ajzat that we are following through. So that's the plan. Today, it's taqwa. Verily, God loves the people of taqwa. Verily, God loves the people of taqwa. Excuse me, just one moment. Sufia? 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 I'm sorry, because I'm running the class. So sorry. <laughs> I'm back. Okay. Um, so, in Allah يحب المتقين. Okay. Now, also very important part, and the reason we're starting with taqwa today is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Okay, so we are in a month that is meant to make us of the people of taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his generosity gave us a clear path to become of those who he loves. Allahu Akbar. Allah in his generosity gave us this month knowing that it will 
it, that this month itself will work on our hard parts. It will work on all the different parts of us so that we can become of the people of taqwa. And Allah loves the people of taqwa. Yani, <laughs> mashallah. Just think about that generosity of our Lord. Mashallah. Now with that in mind, let's get curious about, okay, how, how do I use this month to become of the people of taqwa? How do I... How do I move forward? And we start out in this juz, it was Surah al naml One of the first verses of the juz, not of the surah, that we have here is قُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَالسَّلَامٌ عَلَى عِبَادِهِ الَّذِينَ اصْطَفَى أَاللَّهُ خَيْرٌ أَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ this Surah al naml verse 59. Let me just grab the English. Verse 59. Here we go. Say, Oh, praise belongs to Allah, and peace be upon those of his servants whom he has chosen. Qul alhamdulillah قُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ وَالسَّلَامٌ عَلَى عِبَادِهِ الَّذِينَ اصْطَفَى Salam on those special servants. That's who we're trying to become in these 10 days. That's who we're trying to become in these 10 days. So as we, as we walk on that path, as we walk on that path of becoming of those servants, we want to, and, and as we grow in our taqwa, I want you to just notice this verse. Say Alhamdulillah. And know that there will Salam ala ibadhi ladina sufa. Ya Allah, make us of those of whom you have chosen. Make us of those of whom you have chosen. Now, of course, that verse refers, the Mufassirin will tell us that this verse refers mostly to the prophets because the prophets came to teach us about taqwa. And so if you go to 79 in the same surah, you'll see فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّكَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ الْمُبِينَ A very clear direction. And this is in the middle of a lot of clarity about the Day of Judgment. Now taqwa means, if we want to be of the beloved, taqwa means to have clarity about our aqidah. So the English of that verse that I just read, فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ is to have trust in God. إِنَّكَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ الْمُبِينَ You are on the true path. I want all of us to know that we are on the true path. This is very important. It's very important in a world where we are, we are all in a big salad bowl with so many other people. It can be very, very confusing for us to wonder, especially if you haven't been able to you haven't been blessed or been able to dig deeply into the worship and the ilm of this faith, you may have days when you're confused. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us, إِنَّكَ عَلَى حَقِّ الْمُبِينَ The clear truth. Now to develop taqwa, we need to know that truth. We need to understand where the blessing is. And real taqwa comes from having clarity and understanding of the akhirah. And so, the next life. And so we see here, verse after verse, that is describing what the day of judgment will be like. And when we, for, just for the sake of time, I'm not going to read the verses to you. I suggest you read them. It's the just of today anyway. But as you look, at this, I'm so sorry, it's very, um, lots of stuff going on today at Robert's Center. <laughs> lots of people out there, and I think they need me, actually. But um, we will just uh, say that's okay. Bismillah, here I am with you. Um, so knowing about the Day of Judgment and having it real in our lives is part of taqwa. So we, our goal here is to become of the people of taqwa. Until we know for a fact and for certain, may Allah forgive us for all of our, all of our stuff, 
until we know for a fact and that we are certain that we will stand before God on the day of judgment and be judged, we haven't fully developed taqwa. Today is day 20, so we are on the 20th Jizim. And so part of our process of growing in faith today is to grow in taqwa. Excuse me, just a moment. Oh, she closed it, not opened it. Okay. Is to grow in taqwa. taqwa. Sorry, part of our growing in taqwa is to grow in knowledge and understanding and clarity of the reality that the Day of Judgment is real. And when you go into Surah Al-Qasas, because that's the next Surah, we will go, we will, we will hear stories of people of taqwa. The first one being the story of the mother of Moses. A story that should blow your mind away. Just blow your mind. We're telling you this story. I want to get to the. ila ummi Musa. This is verse seven. And ardi'i, fa ida khifti alayhi fa alqihi fi al-yam, wa la taqafi, wa la tahzani. Excuse me. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is telling us that He inspired the mother of Moses to nurse him, and when she feared for him. To put him in a, we call it sometimes a basket, a, a, a little, a, like a box thing. And not to be afraid and not to grieve. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. This is taqwa. Wow. Taqwa. This is the wow. This is wow taqwa. I don't even know, like, do we have people of today that have this kind of taqwa? This is a woman in the Quran whose story is mentioned as a story for us to, to understand. I'm looking for the English so that I can. There's a word here. I'm not sure how to tell it to you. Here we go. Verse 7. We inspired the mother of Moses. Nurse him. And when you're afraid for him, why would she be afraid for him? Because that was the time when Pharaoh was killing all of the boys of Bani Israel. She had every right to be afraid for him. So when you fear that maybe they're coming to the house to check, for example, cast him in the river. Don't be afraid. Don't grieve. What? How? How? Inna raduhu ilayk. We will return him to you. And we will make him of our messengers. Can we have this taqwa of Allah to do the hard thing and trust? Awhayna is from Wahi. There was an angel who spoke to her. Can we do the hard thing and trust? And have that kind of taqwa? Can we do what is nearly impossible? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here doesn't ask Musa only to do the thing, but how to feel about it, which tells us we have control of our emotions. That part of taqwa is gaining control of our emotions. Now, that is going to be a tough, that's a tough one to swallow, I know. But we do indeed. We have control over it. We can't maybe control how we feel in the first moment of something. But we can control how we feel in the next moment. We can decide if we're going to have coffee and tea with our bitterness and our sadness and our, oh, you hurt my feelings. How many of us are whining on a day-to-day basis about who hurt our feelings and who didn't? That's your choice to stay hurt. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Um Musa, La tahzani, la tahafi, la tahzani. Wow. Fear and grief can be 
the emotions are fear and sadness. Great sadness can be emotions that can take people off the path. Be in control of your fear and be in control of your grief. I have the grief, my grief, you watching me with my articles. I'm, I'm trying, I understand grief as something that tells us we've loved. And so I'm, I'm enjoying the grief, but be careful that it doesn't turn into something where you say, poor me, poor me. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We started out today with Alhamdulillah. Taqwa. Part of Taqwa is Alhamdulillah. 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 There's a really beautiful verse I want to share with you here. Wa asbaha fu'adu ummi Musa fariga. In kadat. لتبدي به لولا أن ربطنا على قلبها لتكون من المؤمنين. This is verse ten. And in verse ten, the heart of the mother of Moses became. Excuse me. The translation became restless or became void. Indeed, she was about to disclose. She would have disclosed what really who really Moses was had we not strengthened her heart to remain amongst those who had firm belief. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sharing with us that Umm Musa, who is a believer and who had taqwa, she got to that point where her heart was void. It was missing Moses so much that she was almost, you know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't nurse until she became the wet nurse. She was worried about him. So Allah strengthened her heart. When you walk on the path of taqwa and tawakkul and alhamdulillah, inna Allah yuhibbul muttaqeen, and become of those who Allah loves, Allah will strengthen your heart. We all need this today. We have a lot of emotional weakness. We want Allah to strengthen our heart. And that heart strength comes with taqwa. It comes with being connected to Allah's fans. It comes with knowledge and it comes with nur. Light that com and light comes with knowledge and light comes with worship. I want to jump now to verses 52 in the same surah, 53 and 54. And I want to look at something a little bit, very fascinating actually to me, when also talking about the heart. Allah SWT is telling us, uh, 52 الذين آتيناهم الكتاب من قبله وهم به يؤمنون those who we gave the book before this they believed in it وإذا يتلى عليهم قالوا آمنا به إنه الحق من ربنا إنا كنا من قبله مسلمين and when this Quran is recited to them, they say, we believe in it. It is the truth from our Lord, and we are the ones who have submitted to it even before it was revealed. Now, here's the verse I really, that was the, that was the introduction. Sorry. Such people, hello, all of you converts out there. Assalamu alaikum, converts. Where are you? Get ready for your extra reward. You know how they say seven, the reward in Ramadan for the Muslim is up to 700? Get out your calculator. Because right here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, these people will be given their reward maratain twice. Bima sabaru. We were patient until we reached this faith. وَيَدْرَؤُونَ بِالْحَسَنِ السَّيِّئَةِ And they repel evil with good. وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ And they spend from what we've given to them. So take that on. How beautiful is that? And here's another one. All of this is about taqwa. Spending what Allah has given us. It belongs to Allah in the first place. Next verse. وَإِذَا سَمَعُوا اللَّغْوَ أَعَرَضُوا عَنْهُ وَقَالُوا لَنَا أَعْمَالُنَا وَلَكُمْ أَعْمَالُكُمْ Salamun alaykum la tabatagi jahilin. 
And when they hear absurd talk or vain talk or ugly talk, they withdraw from it and they say, our deeds are for us and your deeds are for you. Ya jama'ah. To be a person of taqwa, memorize this verse. As long as we are influenced by the people around us to the degree that they make us do what we know is wrong, as long as we are not the people of taqwa. In order to be of the people of taqwa, we need to be of those who know that lana a'maluna, for us are our deeds, walakum a'malukum, and those are your deeds. Like just, um, I don't have to get in your life, I don't have to come in your house, I don't have to tell you what to do, but I'm not going to be influenced by what you do to make me doubt what I do. That's the critical point. We want to be strong and have taqwa. We want to be of the people of taqwa. And I want to go as well to Surah Al-Ankabut, which is the last surah that begins, uh, the last surah of this section. And our goal here is to become of the people who Allah loves. And right now we're talking about being of the people of taqwa. So go to that very first part in Surah Al-Ankabut, the very, very first part. There we go. Mm. Alif Lam Mim. Ahasib al Nasu an yutraku an yakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanu. Wala kad fatanna al ladina min kablihim. Fala alamanna allahu ladina sadaku. Wala alamanna al kadibin. So, this is really interesting in light of the verses we just read. Do people think that they will be left to eat, that they will be left with they, what they said and we believe and they will not be tested? Indeed, we tested those who are before them. Now, we just read a verse about how those who were believers before and then came to Islam, they get double the reward. Bima sabaru. Bima sabaru. In, in that which, uh, in which they were patient for. And when we are patient through our trials, we are rewarded. Maybe the reward is this beautiful deen. But so do we think that we will say, Amanna, wala yuftanun, and we won't be trialed? Laqad fattanna alladheena min qablihim. We trial those who are before them. And God knows the ones who are truthful and knows the liars. فَعَلَّمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا Be of the people who tell the truth. Be of the people who tell the truth. And being of the people who tell the truth is being of the people of taqwa. Skip down to verse 6. وَمَنْ جَاهَدَ فَإِنَّمَا يُجَاهِدُ لِنَفْسِي إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَنِيٌّ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ Who strives, strives for his own benefit. Surely Allah is independent of all the worlds. Don't work for yourself. Work for Allah. The next verse. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا صَالِحَاتِ we will, those who believe and do good deeds, we will wash away their bad deeds and give them a better reward than what they expected for what they used to do. So, in the world of taqwa, taqwa is a word that means to be conscious of God. It means to have awareness of God. Why does fasting help us with that? Because we are aware all day long that we're not eating, we're not drinking. So we want to be also aware of God and more so than how we are aware of not eating and not drinking. We never want to be heedless of Allah. And we want to take this into our days after Ramadan to be of the people of taqwa. Because the people of taqwa in Allah hubbul muttaqeen. And so we want to be of the beloved. And Ya Allah, make us of those who you love. And make us of those who love you. Make us of the people of taqwa. And this is something you shouldn't say and think, oh, that can't happen. This is Ramadan. And Ramadan is to make us of the people of taqwa. So take advantage of it. 
wherever you are, if you are, if you're in your dhikr week right now, so you can't fast, you're still in Ramadan. If you are suffering from a chronic illness, so you can't fast, you're still in Ramadan. Where are you in your Quran? Where are you in your dua? Where are you in your dhikr? Allahu Allah. Allahu Allah. If you are in a busy Ramadan with work, you're still in Ramadan. Ramadan is not about the number of khitmahs you do, though many khitmahs can wash the heart. But rather, Ramadan is about the change that happens inside. Make the change happen this month. Become of the people of Taqwa. We learned today that of the people, becoming the people of Taqwa, if we kind of go backwards, one is to understand that we will be trialed. We will be trialed. So be patient. The that we we also learn that it's to be to become of the people of taqwa. We want to be of those who spend money out of what Allah has given us, and it's really important to do that on the daily. I think in Ramadan, and I will say for those of you who do suffer from chronic issues and you can't fast, it's really hard for you. It's difficult to have days without fasting. And feel you feel this FOMO. You feel left out, and even if you're in your dhikr week, you feel FOMO. But you have to put that effort in to become of the people of taqwa uh, through those days as well. And one really, really, really good way is to feed people. Feed people. Give them iftar. Like you, it's COVID now, but even outside of COVID, you can just purchase iftar for people. You just purchase iftar for people and let them, let them enjoy that in their homes. If you live in an apartment building with Muslims, let's say you're in a country, you can just give iftar to everyone in that apartment building. You could make a big pot of soup, break it up into 12 different ones and drive around town and give it to 12 different people. Put the, put effort in just as you would be putting effort in to, to fasting. Remember your tarawih prayers. And, and remember really that Ramadan is about the change that happens inside. It's a... It's a, the opportunity to come to Allah with full tawbah, to grow into the people of taqwa, and to become of those who Allah loves. I mean, I've already passed the verses, but the, the beauty of this month I want you all to sit with this month for a few moments in your day. Even if you're with others, like sit with your family with a masbaha. Sit with your, my, my new favorite thing as an extrovert to sit with is the drum. Just, just to sit with the drum and, and repeat Allah's name. I don't have time to really do it a lot, but we're doing it at Tarawih here in Minnesota. Find yourself a moment just to sit and reflect and to make dua. Change on the outside affects how you feel on the inside. Change on the inside affects how you feel on the outside. Make this be a month of change on the inside and on the outside, inshallah. And of course, I close by asking you to go to launchkit.com forward slash Rabata and support the work that we do here in Minnesota and globally all over the world with our academic program, our virtual masjid and our community programs. You know, I want to tell you if you live somewhere and you're lonely, you are feeling the profound loneliness, I want you to fight that with taqwa, having taqwa and coming closer to Allah. But if you are feeling like you want to be with people, our Rabata Virtual Masjid has every single day this week, Aktikaf together. And this is a virtual masjid. So wherever you are in the world, you can join us. Uh, even, it might not be nighttime for you. It might be in the day because if, for us, it is 12 p.m. CST or 12 a.m. CST to 2 a.m. CST. Please join us during that time. Join other women. We will be remembering Allah together. There will be a little khatira or talk every night and some individual worship and some together nasheeds. It was so beautiful last night. Last night was the first night. And to sign up, you just sign up for the masjid. If you're not already signed up, sign up for the masjid. You'll get the email link. And that link does change daily. 
So you'll want to make sure to register. Um, somebody will put the registration link there somewhere, please, in the chat, in the comments. And uh, you can oh, post pleasure. You can join. You could join us for your post pleasure put on reading your post pleasure time. I know it's not going to be convenient for everyone, but I I do want to extend an invitation to everyone because it's truly a blessing for us all. Uh, right there, bitly.com or what's a virtual message, inshallah. And that that's a wonderful way to spend the last ten days together. And I want to help. I want us all to help each other truly and deeply benefit from these last days. May you and I and all of us become of the beloved, become of those who love, become of those who love what God loves and loves the deeds that he loves and loves the, the ways that he loves. Yes, it is daily. Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember us at launchkit.com forward slash Assalamu alaikum everybody.